Singapore. Oh, thank you. Is this your first time? It it is. Yeah, it's wonderful. Well, welcome, Singapore. welcome. So, so only for this. Yes. Amazing. Yep, yeah, we fly home again on Monday. Wow. Oh, so, oh. But Singapore is just beautiful. Everyone's so friendly. And how much training? Sorry, may I ask? Uh, yeah. You know. Um, we we have continuous training. Our initial training is only about two weeks, which okay. teaches us the very basics, and then okay. from there we have continual training, right. um, dependent on which event what what the challenge actually is. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so we we're, we're trained to do everything from driving through mud, you know, yeah. up to your axles in mud yes. and beyond. Um, you know, I've recently been out to Norway to do um, driving in snow, so higher speed, low attraction, that kind of thing. Um, and um, and we do dynamic work as well, so speed, so so that we can demonstrate the torque vectoring capabilities yeah. of the of the vehicles yeah. as well. So I'm very lucky. But, well, so this all... on a track, for example. Oh, it's it's phenomenal. Oh yeah, you you take this into a bend at speed. And torque vectoring kicks in, it balances the, the power between the wheels, so it would apply braking where required oh. to keep you nice, safe and level. So, yeah. um, across all models? Or... Mm -hmm. um, it's certainly on the Evoque, it's okay. also on the new Sport. Okay. Um, the Model Year 14 Discovery will have it as well, the Range Rover, the 405 okay. will. So the Freelander possibly not, okay. um, and of course the Defender, no. Okay. But, uh, Yes. Well, this is the this is the model year 14 Evoque. So it's a nine-speed automatic. It's a two-liter petrol. Two liters. Two liter. Oh, okay. So, so the other one was the bigger one, right? That, the, yep. The that's three. a three-liter okay. petrol. So um, this does have active drive line. Now, what you'll see is that as we come up here, yeah. what I'm going to do is at the moment it's showing that the power is just going to the front wheels, even though it's showing we're in four-wheel drive. Okay. So as we start coming up here, you'll see the power is starting okay, to come. Yes through to the rear wheels as well so and as I ask it to work harder yes. and do more for me it's going to put more power yes. to the back wheels so uh, coming forward now to maximum on the back wheels there you go so we'll just keep bringing it up nice and gently there we go your colleague was saying that it can handle up to 45 degrees. Yes, yeah. It's it's quite phenomenal what you can do with them. The general rule of thumb tends to be that the drivers actually run out of nerve before the car runs out of talent. So, so yes. So don't blame the car. Don't blame the car. Okay. Blame the driver. Okay. Yep, and that's always the case. So we'll just come around here. I'll try not to run over my colleagues, otherwise that'll mean I'll have an awful lot of work to do. That's right, you'll, yeah. you'll have to do it all. I know, if I bump them off, yeah. For the weekend, no. So, we're going to come down to walking holes. Now, we've already been through these in the Sport, of course. Yes. Which has got the cross-linked air suspension, four-corner yes. air suspension. So, so, of course, this doesn't have that system on it. Okay. So this has got normal coil spring suspension. Mm -hmm. Again, you can see the power going to the rear wheels mm -hmm. when needed. I'm just going to just a little bit of throttle. And what I'm asking the car to do is actually bring that back wheel up. Mm -hmm. So bringing it up very gently, changing the balance because we're currently sitting on two wheels at the moment, diving over the front wheels, That's right. putting the front wheel back down. So the back wheel is going to come up to about two and a half feet in the air. So you can feel it just coming up higher and higher, and then we'll start coming down the other side, putting the back wheel back down, putting the front wheel back down again, and then we've just got this last back wheel to come back down as we change all the angles. And in a rainier condition, mm -hmm. the same thing will have happened. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. What about, you know, I don't know, mud and things like that when, you know, the traction is not really there? 
Um, it has traction control, which basically will kick in, and traction control works by sending the power where it's needed to enable the car to keep moving. So at the point where you actually start losing traction mm -hmm. on the on one wheel, yes. it will actually apply the brake to that wheel okay. and then send the power yes. to where there is actually grip. Right. Okay. And that means that you can keep moving okay. when you've actually not got grip on all okay. four wheels. Right. So the computer does that work? It does, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, just in key stuff in here for a minute. And do the, I, I presume all the owners, well, they get this kind of training? Or? They should get a comprehensive handover from the dealership at the point where they buy the car. And in the UK, certainly, they also get a voucher, okay. um, which enables them to go to one of the centres and actually have an experience which will give them a grounding in the skills that they will need to get the best out of their vehicle. Okay. But being honest, 90% of the people who buy these vehicles, yeah. certainly in the UK, will never actually take right. them off road. So they really need to know things like park assist, yes. um, you know, adaptive cruise control. They don't need to know how it goes in low range in grass, gravel, okay. snow. Okay. So, but we'll tell them anyway. Thank you, so, thank yeah. you for okay. this. <laughs>